I asked you what the best steak to cook for Father's Day would be, and 64% of you said a tomahawk ribeye would be the best steak. So I went out and bought two of the biggest, meatiest, manliest tomahawk steaks that I could find, and we're gonna cook both of those today. And as long as I'm cooking two, let's do an experiment. Now I've seen lots of chefs and pitmasters do hanging tomahawk steaks, but they always do it over direct heat. They never put them in a vertical smoke chamber. So we're gonna try that today and we're gonna find out. Maybe we've never seen that because they know it's a bad idea and maybe they've never done it because I'm more creative, but we're gonna find out. We're gonna cook one of them in a vertical smoke chamber and we're gonna cook the other one in a horizontal smoke chamber on Boba Fett, my smoker that has both chambers. And we're gonna see which one's better and see what the right way to smoke a tomahawk ribeye will be. Okay, since uh, this video is gonna be published right before Father's Day, I uh, took some time and got dressed up in the traditional dad uniform for you. Growing up, uh, my dad was a very hands-on dad. He, he traveled a lot for work, but when he was home, he wanted to spend quality time. We did lots of stuff together. I remember uh, probably one of my earliest memories is as a little tiny kid, uh, dad wanted to build a TV cabinet, one of those big console cabinets. And I remember him enlisting my help. I couldn't have been more than maybe two or three years old, but I, I remember, you know, I got to put glue on and I got to put the felt on and we worked together. You know, those kinds of things were really special to me uh, growing up. Dad was a Boy Scout. I was a Boy Scout, followed in his footsteps, managed to go a little bit farther than than he did, I think he was proud of me. You know, dad instilled in me from the very beginning, as, as early as I can remember, if you're gonna do something, do it right. You know, I remember I wanted to be an astronaut. And dad said, if you're gonna be an astronaut, be an astronaut, but go farther than any astronaut has ever gone before. Do it better, be the smartest astronaut, and I'll support you. And you know, if you wanna be a ditch digger, then you dig deeper ditches and wider ditches and you dig them faster than any other ditch digger and you be the best and you know whatever you want to do I'll support you and, and uh, I think that lesson defines a lot of uh, what I do today right I mean even on the YouTube channel right I want to have the best content that I can have um, I want to tell the best stories I want to cook the best food I want to be the best that there is and uh, I think that all comes from my dad. I miss my dad. Uh, he died uh, almost 13 years ago, but he lives on in, in, in lessons like that and, and the guiding principles that he gave me that I still use every day. And, uh, and I try to pass on to my daughter and I hope that she'll pass those things on to her kids if uh, hopefully she has kids and makes me a granddad someday. Happy Father's Day, I love you, Dad. So I got a couple of theories about what we're gonna see today. We've got the two steaks and the one going in the vertical chamber and the one going in the horizontal chamber. Now, the first difference I'm positive we're gonna see is the quantity of smoke. First of all, the vertical chamber is gonna be running about 30% lower in temperature than the horizontal chamber, so it's just gonna take longer to cook. And the second thing is the smoke and the way that it flows through the smoker comes across the horizontal chamber, up through the vertical chamber, and then it's gonna bunch up, up in here, before it finally goes out that smaller stack. And so that's gonna be even more smoke on the steak. So the second thing I think could happen is quality of smoke. With all that smoke bunching up in here, so we could get a more bitter taste on the vertical, or we might not. And then the third thing that's gonna be really interesting is density of the meat. See, when we cook a tomahawk steak, we tie around the steak and secure it to the bone with butcher's twine, because when we flip the steak, we don't want that meat falling off. Well, when we hang that steak, that means the weight of the steak is going to be resting on that butcher's twine, which means that all that pressure is gonna be put on the spinalis. So I think two things could happen. First of all, you know, we bunch up briskets and ribs because as they cook, they firm up. I think the steak might firm up in that kind of compressed texture, making it more dense and less tender. The other side effect of that that I think could happen is with all that pressure, as the fat renders, the weight could push some of that fat out. So we might end up with a less juicy steak. And the last thing that, you know, it's not a theory, we know for sure this is gonna happen, is that one of these steaks is gonna be more fun to cook than the other, because only one is gonna let me use power tools. So let's go ahead and get these prepped. Now the prep actually started yesterday. I dry brined these steaks yesterday, about this time, so about 24 hours. If you don't know what dry brining is, it's uh, simply putting salt on steak. 
So we put about a teaspoon and a half per pound. These are about three and a half pounds each. So a couple of tablespoons of salt uh, over the sides, around the edges, and then we put it on a rack and put it back in the refrigerator so that salt will absorb and it'll pull out any excess moisture. So here we are a day later and you can see how pronounced the marbling is in the eye and in the cap of the ribeye. These are gonna be uh, delicious steaks. These are ready to go. So let me go ahead and get these prepped. Now, when we cook tomahawk steaks, the first step in prepping them is actually tying them up with butcher's twine. And the reason is because we wanna be able to use that handle to hold on to the steak and that meat as it cooks is gonna get soft and we want that meat to be able to stay to the bone. So we're just gonna use this twine as a reinforcement. All right, you remember I told you I was worried about the weight being supported and what was gonna happen with this tight string. This is what I'm talking about. With the meat being supported by this, we'll see what happens with this one in the vertical smoker. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of flavoring on here. So for a binder, just to help the pepper stick, I use Wagyu tallow. If, uh, if you don't know about Wagyu tallow, I've got a video on how to make this from your fat, from your brisket and steak trimmings. But all I'm gonna do is cover both of these steaks with the Wagyu tallow. And then we're just gonna get a little bit of fresh pepper on here. Don't worry about putting too much on. These are massive steaks, they can take it. All right, these are ready. I'm gonna bring them inside and give them time to come up to room temperature. The most important part of prep, it's Father's Day guys, make sure you take care of yourselves. All right, while these come up to room temperature, let's go ahead and get the smoker lit. Say hello to my little friend. All right, the smoker's up to temperature. Now the horizontal chamber is running at about 250 and the vertical chamber, like predicted, is at about 175. I think the one that's horizontal is gonna take about an hour to smoke. And I think the one that's hanging is probably gonna take about an hour and a half. So I'm just gonna put the one that's hanging in now. Uh, and then a half hour later, I'll come back and put that in. So I've got this S hook. I'm just gonna put the S hook through the hole that we drilled earlier. So I'm just gonna hang it from the bar here, right in the middle right underneath the stack and we'll let that get smoking. While that steak takes on some smoke, here's a quick message from one of my favorite barbecue pit masters. Hey Al, happy Father's Day to ya. I am not a father myself, but I do in fact have one. He was king of the grill in our household. Whether he was whipping up a burger, a steak, some pork chops, you name it, you can say the Weber Kettle and I go way back. So I have to thank my father for instilling that in me at a very young age. One of the funniest stories I have with my dad is actually on film. It's an episode I shot last summer when we were all at Virginia Beach cooking up some crab cakes, and my dad very confidently was trying to show us how to grab a crab without getting pinched. And well, I'll just roll the clip and let you see for yourself. Bradley, they pinch! Yeah, they're crabs. <laughs> Pick him up by the back. No, the back. That is the back. The back. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the bastard. Oh! <laughs> Gets me every time. Anywho, happy Father's Day to you, Al, and all the other fathers out there. And I hope you enjoy whatever you're cooking up. All right, it's been a half hour. Let's put this one on the horizontal smoker. I'm going to put it on the top grate here with the meat facing the firebox. I want the majority of smoke to come over the steak. Right, we don't really care about getting smoke on the bone and this is gonna get it the most. All right, as long as we're here, let's go ahead and check on the one in the vertical chamber. Oh wow, that's getting some nice smoke. Now you notice here how this string is digging in here, the butcher's twine. This is what I was afraid of, is that we were gonna be compressing the steak. So we'll see what happens with that uh, at the end. Let's go ahead and check and see how we're doing temperature wise. All right, we're at 76 degrees, so we're probably in good shape. I think I might have guessed right. This might get done a little faster, uh, but we'll see. I'll be back in a half an hour to check again. All right, looking good. You need to turn that. No, it's too soon. You're gonna burn it. It wasn't dry brined long enough. It's a quick cure. Anybody seen my sunglasses? Come on, guys. I got this. Hey, yo, this is Dash. So this is the kid's sky fort. That sky fort has been in our yard for probably Actually, it's been over 10 years, but I'm gonna insert some pictures. My dad came down from Philadelphia and helped me put this together. We worked on this for four days. It took us four days to put this thing together. There were thousands of parts, <laughs> nuts and bolts that were crazy, and it was a lot of effort and a lot of time, but it was really cool because he came down on the train from Philadelphia, like I said, 
to Baltimore to help me put this thing together and it has definitely stood the test of time so there we go anyway happy father's day to all of you guys out there in grill land uh, who are fathers and um you know happy father's day to you too al talk to you later okay the horizontal one's been on for a half hour the one that's hanging on for an hour let's go check and see how they're doing oh boy just look at this okay without any help from the other dads let's check this and see how it's doing i'm going to come in from the side and go to the middle all right, this one's taking its time, 112, 113. So it's gonna take another 10 or 15 minutes. I'm gonna let it go and then I'll pull it off. But let's go check the vertical, see how close that one is. 114, so we're, we're close on both of them. All right, same thing, I'm gonna give this a few more minutes and I'm gonna pull it off and uh, let them rest. Okay, these have to rest for about 10 minutes before we sear. We wanna let that continuation cooking, let the temperature come up to peak and then start to come down so that when we sear, that they're not continuing to cook. We're just getting that sear on the outside. While we wait, there's somebody really special that has a Father's Day message for you. Um, if I could pick one word to describe my dad, it would be funny. He is an amazing cook. My favorite thing about cooking with my dad is that he makes it into fun, not just cooking. From you? Boop, boop. I think he's the, he's the best at making steak, 100%. Which type of steak? Ribeye. My, my favorite memory is when he, when he dropped the steak onto the dirt when we were cooking, and, this was, and he was really proud of it. Well, good news, Leah. I mean, it doesn't look like it has any dirt on it. <laughs> did you drop the steak? I did. And he didn't know what to do, so he just picked it up, dusted it off, and we, we ate it anyways. I want to say, happy Father's Day. You are an amazing father. Okay, the time has come to sear, and this is a Father's Day special, so we're gonna sear using the tool that every father wants for Father's Day. If you don't have one, by the way, there'll be a link down there in the description, also on the screen, where you can get a 10% discount on this. This is the sous vide gun from Grill Blazer, and a flamethrower is the way to sear a steak. So we're gonna keep it authentic to our experiment, and I'm gonna take this one that was hanging, hang it back up, this one that's horizontal, put it back in the horizontal chamber, and we're gonna sear it right in there. I'll meet you at the grill. Okay, it's finally that time. I, I know you guys noticed this knife a couple of times. It's got the bottle opener, it's got the fork, which you haven't seen me use yet, and uh, it's a Dahlstrong Shogun. Thank you to Dahlstrong, by the way, for sponsoring this video. This is their new Pitmaster knife, and it's everything that you need from trimming to slicing to opening that beer while you're cooking. So if you're watching this before Father's Day, make sure that you send the link that you see on the screen right now to whoever's buying you presents for Father's Day, because this is pretty cool. All right. So Leah, two steaks, exactly the same. You recognize them, right? These are tomahawk steaks with the big bone, right? So I cooked them differently. One I cooked in the horizontal chamber on boba and the other one I hung up in the vertical smoker. And I think they're gonna be different. So let's try the one done traditional. You've tasted this before because I've cooked in the horizontal chamber before. Here you guys, you take this one. I'll put it right here for you. Ready? Cheers, cheers. All right, so I overcooked it. It's not medium rare. It's more medium, but tasty, right? Yeah, it's tasty. It has a really different flavor though. Okay, not too much smoke, right? Because you don't yeah. like too much smoke flavor. All right, so let's try this one here. This is the one that I cooked in the vertical chamber. That looks better. It think. does look better. We'll see, but even with it overcooked, look how juicy this is. Cheers, cheers. 
All right, I expected this steak to be tougher. What do you think? Is it tougher? I think it's tougher. It is tougher, right? So it did bunch up a little bit. There's a lot more flavor, a lot more smoke. What do you think? Is it too much? I think it's less than that. Less All right, so I guess that theory is blown. I mean, it is a little tougher from hanging. I tasted a little bit more smoke. She didn't taste as much smoke, so it's not too smoky, too powerful. I guess either way is probably a good way to make it. Maybe we'll try next time cooking a hanging one over direct heat and see how that goes since we do have a Santa Maria grill that we can hang tomahawks from. All right, thank you for watching. Watch this video next. I think you're really gonna like it. And we'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans.